gang, hey, 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 is it the Ghoul and Froggy Show? No, it's Tube Amp Vita. Yep, you're back at D Lab with Terry, and on the bench, I have a really nice vintage Fender Brown Face Princeton amp. The thing came in sick. The guy said it's distorted, kind of fizzles. And uh, when I put it on the scope, I had quite the surprise. So let me show you what it's doing. Okay, so we got the Princeton chassis in position. And this is how I always put them for ease of access to both sides of the amp. Back there is good old Heathkit audio generator providing an input to the Princeton. I have a meter here so I can watch power supply. Audio test set, which will give me a load plus a monitor out, which is going to the Tektronix scope. First off, volumes all the way down, as well as speed and intensity of that tremolo. I've got my meter watching the power supply, and I'm going to plug it in, watch the meter. I actually have the meter in AC volts. Now I'm watching the AC coming off of the filter cap. You see she's about 4 volts, which is nice. Now look, swooping up. So I've got 43 volts of AC on a DC line that's normally about 300 or so on a Princeton. So that's kind of odd. Now I have the meter on DC. You can see the plate voltage, about 358 on the filter cap. Swoop up here. You can see she's pretty much original. It's got all those old blue caps. Pretty cool. This thing has not been touched in a long time. While we monitor the power supply, I'm going to bring up the volume. And if you look down on the test set, you can see the wattage there. It's got a good output. But now let's take a look at the scope and watch the sine wave. So you can see it's fairly clean, but you can see there's some warble in it. Now look when I really crank it. Look what happens to that. It goes nuts. Right? So let's take a look at the power supply. There's that 358. I'm going to crank it. Look at her nose diving. Okay. Now let's switch over to AC. I'm going to watch that AC content while I crank it up. Look at it. It goes way over 60 volts. That is a sure sign that the old filter cap is toast. So here's the old original, an old Astron 320 microfarad sections at 450 volts DC. Looks like it's been in there since day one. We're going to replace it with this cap. This is kind of like what you see in Marshalls. I don't have a heart attack, all right? I've already verified this with the owner, and I know a lot of you guys like to keep the natural look at the amp and strap them in underneath and all that, but he elected for the new can type mount cap. So that's what we're going to do. First step for changing out a filter cap in any amp is monitor the voltage on the cap. You can see there's only 7 volts, but sometimes it's much higher. Then I just take a resistor to ground. Okay, so you just got this clip, go into the chassis. This is a 1000 ohm resistor. Pick about anything you want, doesn't matter. I'll put that on and watch it discharge the cap. Even though you, th you think that's it, hit them all, okay? Just go to each leg, and then take your meter, and check each leg. Make sure it's dead, so you don't get any surprises. So the next step will be disconnecting these leads from the filter cap, okay? As you can see, the lengths of these are pretty limited. Okay, so don't get in here with your wire cutters and go back here, well, I'll just cut them an inch back because you're not going to get the wires on your new cap, right? So try to maintain as much of this length as possible so you don't have to rewire the thing. So as you can see, the leads came right off the filter cap, so I'll be able to use the original connections. So what I did here is I kind of grouped them. So these three went here, this guy goes here, and this guy goes here. Next step. We have to take these tabs, bend them up, and get that old cap out. So the challenge is, to get this cap out, is you have to unsolder these tabs that they did back in the day. I'd highly recommend that you get one of these old Snozzasauruses. This is an old Unger, and this tip runs at about 1,000 degrees. It's pretty heavy duty. 
So first thing you want to do is you just wet it a little bit, okay? So you can transfer some heat, okay? So you see that smoky, right? Put that on there, and it'll heat that baby right up. Get your screwdriver under the tab once you see the solder melting, and you can lift that tab up. So I had to take a little break there because I uh, had to get both hands in there. I didn't want to bore you. But anyway, the tab's up. The other two are up. So the next step is grab the cap from the top, pull him out of the way. You'll see him pull back, work it, bam, she's off, okay? Then I take my iron and I remove these solder globs, clean up the chassis. So let's take a multimeter and check this cap for leakage. Here's section three, which will go to your preamps. Section two, screen. There's section one, which is plate. You see that? That's leakage to the case of the cap. So that's our culprit. Okay, so out with the old Astron and in with the new CE distribution type cap. Now, you could buy one of these old Snozoramuses still. You can get them. They're about 45 bucks a piece. Whereas you can get these for under 10 and they do as good of a job. All right, so you can see this cap mounts differently, has mounting tabs. So we're going to have to put this back on the chassis and mark these holes. And I'll use some little 440 screws to mount this bracket onto the chassis. So I've got the new filter cap installed. The meter's hooked back up where it was. I'm going to plug it in. Let's watch that DC level. Here she goes. Now if you remember, before changing the filter cap, we were about 358 volts. So we've went up a good 20, 25 volts, indicating that the old filter cap was probably leaking a little bit. Right? Let's take a look at that AC content. Remember we had about 42 volts idle. Now she's at about what? 1.6, under two, which is good. Now I'm gonna crank up volume. You can see the AC coming up but nothing even close to what it was before. Let's go back and watch the DC level. I'll crank it up. She goes down about 20 volts, 20, 30 volts, but that's to be expected mainly because this amp doesn't have a choke. So here we go again. Audio test set's hooked up. I'm gonna play the volume. You can see the meter over there doing its thing. Let's take a look at the scope. There's a sine wave. That jump, jump, jump's gone. Now when I really crank it, of course, she'll break up like it's supposed to. But it's definitely performing much better than what it was. So we're good on the filter cap. Now here's the other thing that is a must to replace. And that's this cap. This is your negative bias cap. If that thing dries out, it'll eat your output tubes. They'll glow cherry red, and you'll be like, man, why didn't I spend 50 cents and change that cap? So we're going to do that right now. So here's what I'm going to replace it with. I always bump the value up a little bit. So it's a 33 instead of a 25 microfarad. Watch your polarity, people. Keep those negatives to the right. You hook this thing up backwards, it's going to go kerpowy, and your output tubes will follow. New caps installed. Plug her in. This is a negative bias going to your output tubes. Should be approximately negative 35 volts. She's right on the money. Unlike most of the fender ramps, you can't adjust this bias. What you get is what you get. All right, so our little Princeton patient is on the road to recovery. A couple bad caps, the hum's gone. She came to life, as you can see. Now in this video, I'm just gonna show you the power supply repair. I still have things to do to this amp. I'm going to go through it, buzz it out, check other components. But all in all, she's doing good. Hope you enjoyed the video. I gotta tell you, they don't make amps like this in Parma. Turn blue, see you again. Tube amp. Detox.